Okay, so we're back. And we're gonna do a few more examples of R and S. I think that you will appreciate that, won't you? Especially when the test time runs around. Okay, so this is where we left off. And we took a molecule called tubromobutane. We identified a chiral carbon. We said yes, there was at least one. And because there was a chiral carbon, there was a set of enantiomers that came along with it. Those enantiomers are stereoisomers. Enantiomers are representing the left hand and the right hand form. And down below, we basically represented both the left hand and the right hand form. So we want to do a few more of these examples just to prove to ourselves that we can solve these types of problems like they want us to. So let's do another one. Let's do CH3. CH parentheses BR and then CH2 and OH. So the question is going to be number one, is there a chiral carbon and if so identify it and number two, if there is a chiral carbon, please draw the enantiomers that are associated with that compound. In other words, give me the R, give me the S and label them. Label them both. Okay, so maybe the best way to solve this type of problem is taking a structure like this and drawing it out in maybe a little better detail than what this is trying to represent to me. This parentheses means that this bromine group is an attachment and it's an attachment onto that previous carbon. So that is what gives that carbon maybe a total of four bonds. And then off of that is a CH2 and then an OH. So the line up at the top is a very condensed way to represent that structure and then down below is me just kind of cleaning that up and changing it into something that we are used to seeing all throughout the semester so far. All right, so this is the structure that we want to question. So we want to know, is there any chiral carbon? Are there any chiral carbons? There could be more than one, right? Not, is there a chiral carbon? Are there multiple chiral carbons? If so, label them all. Okay, so let's go through here. I know this is not going to be one because there's three hydrogens. I know this is not going to be one because it has two hydrogens on it. So the only questionable carbon is that one with the bromine on it. So is that one a chiral carbon? Well, I look to the left and I see a methyl group and then I look down below and I see a bromo group and I look to the one to the right and there's a CH2OH group. So yes, that is a chiral carbon. I'm going to put a check mark beside of that one because I know that that chirality is going to lead to an R and an S. All right, so this is going to be the purple carbon that I'm going to start drawing or the pinkish fuchsia carbon that I'm going to start to draw. So we know there's two forms, and I'm just going to draw the first one there, and I know I'm going to end up with a second one, so might as well draw it over there. And then I've always told you on the left-hand side, if, if we are given the freedom to do what we want, I'm going to draw a line straight up, and then I'm going to draw a line straight to the left. Well, if we do the mirror image, I'm going to do straight up and straight to the right. Okay, so that's where we like to start because we're given the freedom to do so. Now, in the front, I told you two wedges are going to be at play. One is going to be a dashed wedge, which means it goes away from your face, and the other one is in your face. So there we go, solid and dashed wedge. Well, when we do the mirror image, this is going to flip, right? So the solid wedge will go to the left, and the dash wedge will also go to the left. Once again, I'm trying to represent 3D. That's what I'm trying to get across. Okay, so now we need to look at these four groups. I'm going to list them over to the side. This is very similar to what we've done before, but slightly different. I've got a CH3 group, a methyl. And then a hydrogen is on that carbon, and a bromo group is on that carbon, and a CH2OH group is on that carbon. So we need to rank these, and I want to find the lowest one first. That's always where we start. Which one is the lowest? And that's the lowest atomic number. So the lowest one here is going to be hydrogen. It has the lowest atomic number of everything. By default, it is the back end every single time that it shows up. So I want to put the hydrogen here. And that gives me three groups that I need to rank. 
and those three groups are going to determine whether I have drawn the R or the S form, right hand or left hand. Now I'll start with the highest priority group, the highest atomic number. Out of those, it looks like it's going to be bromine, folks. So bromine is going to go up here at the top, highest atomic number. The other two carbons, they're a tie. Then I kind of move on and I look at oxygen and that other carbon CH3 group runs out. So CH2OH would be next in line. I don't really care how you put them on here at this point. It's not telling me to draw one specific one. It's just saying you got to represent both. So we have to start somewhere. So this is just how I'll order them on the molecule. No big deal. Now we have to figure out which one did we make. So that means I need to go in and I need to rank them. Rank number one is here. Rank number two is down here. Rank number three is right there. So therefore, top of the line, matey, over to the right hand side, that points towards your right hand. That is a clockwise rotation, folks. That means that we have represented the R form at that position. Well, I now need to take the mirror image, right? We need to represent both. Well, bromine's not going to go anywhere. When I do the mirror image, bromine's kind of stuck where it needs to be. The methyl group on the left now goes to the right-hand side. And then if I take a look at these two, well, you might be inclined to do a CH2OH here and an H here and say, done deal. But let's just double check it. Okay. Okay. My bromo group up here at the top. My second in line is my CH2OH group. And then my third in line is my methyl group. Therefore, the rotation goes this way. That points to my left hand. It's counterclockwise. So therefore, that is the S form. So there's the question. There's the answer to the question. And folks, that's all there should be going into this process right now. That's it getting comfortable to identify chirals, and then being able to represent them in a 3D way on a right hand and a left hand form. Okay, so let's look at another. Number two, Cl, CH2, CH2, CH, CH3, CH2, and CH3. So once again, I see this thing with parentheses. I really don't like that. So I'm going to redraw this to something a little bit better than what we've been seeing. And this is a chlorine with a CH2, a CH2, a CH. That parentheses set means that it went to the previous carbon. So that is a substituent that hangs off of that carbon. So CH3 is going to hang down like that or up, depending on how you want to draw it. doesn't matter. And then CH2 and CH3. So do we have a chiral carbon? Well, let's go through and check. This one can't be one, two hydrogens. That one can't be one, this one can't be one, that one can't be one, and this one can't be one. That was very easy. Now we have a questionable one, right? I mean, there's only one hydrogen, but that doesn't mean that it's, it's chiral. We have to make sure there's four different groups. Well, hydrogen is one of those groups. And then we have an ethyl group that's here to the right. And we have a methyl group that's down below. And then we have this ethyl group, but there's a chlorine on it. So that does make it a different group. So there are four different groups on this molecule. So once again, I'll identify this chiral carbon with a purple. That means that this is the center of that molecule. And this is how I'll begin to draw the R form and the S form right there. Well, we also know we have two more bonds on this thing, so I might as well draw them. I'll do a shaded, and I'll do a dashed wedge. And then here, I'll do a shaded that represents toward me, and I'll do a dashed wedge that represents away from me. Now I need to represent both the R and the S form because there's two different ones here. They're stereoisomers, and these are enantiomers because they're right-handed, left-handed. Well, I'll write the groups over to the side like I've done before. 
I have a hydrogen. I have a methyl group. I have an ethyl group that's on that carbon. And then I have this CH2, CH2, Cl group that's on that carbon as well. My low priority goes in the back. Well, it's hydrogen. By default, that's an easy one. So hydrogen's there. My high priority group, I always like to write up at the top. Okay. So out of these, which is the high priority group? Well, the three that are left, carbon, 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 pretty much a tie, isn't it? So I go to the next one. This one runs out, carbon, carbon, pretty much a tie, isn't it? And then I go on, this one runs out, and then it's my chlorine. So that ethyl group, CH2, CH2, with the Cl on it, is the highest priority in this case. Now, where the other two go, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't tell me to draw one specific form or the other. So I don't really care where you put them. So I'm just going to put my CH2, CH3 here, and I'll put my CH3 group right there. Now I need to rank them. We've already kind of did that though, right? One, rank two, rank three. So if I start up at the top and I go this way to rank two, this points to my right hand. This is a clockwise rotation around the molecule. So therefore, this is the R form of that particular molecule. We put that in front of the name of the molecule, right? And we put it in parentheses. Well, I need to do the mirror image now, so I need to flip this sucker around. The top one's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay kind of where it needs to be. My methyl group will flip over onto this side, and then my CH2CH3 group, I can kind of leave forward, and my H is going to be there. Well, once again, my low priority group is pointed to the back. So if I look at this group, that is still rank one, this is still rank two, that's still rank three. I get a rotation that looks like this. It points to my left hand, so therefore this is the S form of that molecule. That one feel a little bit better? I hope so. Let's look at another. CH2, CH, CH3, CH, OH, CH3. And let me change that to a 3 there. Okay, so once again, parentheses, I don't like this stuff, right? We're going to convert this over. So I've got a CH3 group, a CH. That parentheses means that that methyl group is hanging off of the prior carbon. So there we go and then a CH, and then an OH group, and then a CH3. Once again, that parentheses means it's hanging off of the prior carbon. So we need to kind of look at this and we need to say, okay, do we have chiral carbons, yes or no? So I'm gonna look at this structure really quick and I'm gonna say no to this one, no to that one, and no to this one. Why? There's three hydrogens. Those are very easy to pick out. No, no, no. Now we have two questionable carbons. Are either one of these chiral, right? So if I look to the left-hand one, this carbon has a hydrogen, it has a methyl group, and down below it has a methyl group. So there's two identical groups on this carbon. That one cannot be chiral either. Sorry, we move on. What about this one? There's a chance that there's no chiral carbon. So therefore, no R, no S. So if I look at this carbon, there's a hydrogen, there's a methyl group, there's an OH group, and an isopropyl group. So there are four different groups that are assigned here. So therefore, that is a chiral carbon, which means that I can draw a R form and an S form around that chirality. Well, just like before, I'll start off with my wedges. I'm getting a little sloppy on them, that's okay. There we go. So this particular carbon is the one that we're going to center around because that's my chiral carbon. Over here to the right-hand side, I'm going to write down my groups. I have an OH group. I have a hydrogen. I have a methyl group. 
and then I have an isopropyl group. So I need to represent that the proper way, and there we go. So if I look at these and pick out the lowest rank first, that's the only way that this works, it's by default hydrogen once again. So hydrogen will go here. Then if I look at this and pick out the highest priority group, I have oxygen and carbon and carbon. Oxygen wins. So OH goes up at the top. The other two groups, guess what? Don't care. It tells me to draw both. we got to start somewhere. So I'm just going to write my isopropyl group that's here. And then on this side, we'll do our methyl group. We need to rank them. OH gets rank 1. Carbon, carbon's a tie. We move on. Next in line is a carbon. Over here, runs out. So this is rank 2, and that is rank 3. So if I start at the top, it points this way. Folks, that goes to my right hand. Therefore, this is the R version. I take the mirror image. OH won't go anywhere. My CH3 will flop over. And then I can draw my isopropyl group here and then my methyl group there. Once again, OH is ranked 1. Sorry, that was silly, wasn't it? CH3 does not go there. Tracy, what are you thinking? Hydrogen goes there. So OH is group number one. Hydrogen's in the back, which is where it needs to be. That's the only way that this process works. Group two, isopropyl. Group three, methyl. So arrow points to my left hand. Therefore, this is the sinister one. Okay, so there's three more examples of doing chirality, picking out chiral carbons, drawing them on a sheet of paper, playing with the solid and dashed wedges, and figuring out what you've just done. And maybe you're probably wondering that the whole semester, this whole class so far. What did I just do? I hope not, but maybe. But in this scenario... How we can use these groups and the highest atomic numbers to figure out the rotation about the chiral carbon. All right, so that's where this video is going to stop. So we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep kind of building up on top of this theory and seeing what else will be in store for us a little bit later on.